Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 16. So why lone pair repel mode? If you see, see the lone pairs are localized in central atom itself. For example, this, this lone pair is the central atom itself. And when you talk about the bonded pair, this is shared, shared across between two atoms. For example, this is my carbon. This is my hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. So I'm talking about a lone pair, right? There's no lone pair in this, all are bond pair because this is a bond pair, this is a bond pair, all are bonded. So, and these atoms in a bond, as you know, in a cobalt band, you need two electrons and these two electrons are shared. So if I have, if I'm talking about two electrons here, this is shared between carbon and hydrogen. But in this case, if you see, there's a lone pair and these two electrons are as it is here in this, correct? In this case also if you see, for example this is NH3 I think, NH3 and this is H2O. So if you, if you draw the Lewis structure for CH3, carbon is not having any extra electrons but if you talk about NH3, it will be something like this, two electrons here. If we talk about H2O, it will have four electrons here, right? So since in this case, there is a bond pair, bond pair means that two electron I am talking about is shared, is between carbon and hydrogen, it has less effect. This guy, if you see, is totally sitting here. Here, this guy is totally sitting here, totally sitting here. So this guy is repel more. Because they are not shared, they are totally here. That's why the lone pair, they want to occupy more space. And since they want to occupy more space, they repel more. Correct? Because see, they, they, they don't have, they, they have to be, they need to get more space. Because they are only with this nitrogen or oxygen here. Correct? There is no other atom sharing this electron. So they are totally with this, depend on this nitrogen. So this, this nitrogen has to give more space to this electron, two, two electrons. But in this case, since this, this two electrons are shared between hydrogen and carbon, these two electrons sometimes spend time with hydrogen, sometimes with carbon. So even if carbon gives less space to these electrons, they are happy. But in these case, these electrons are totally dependent on nitrogen. So they need to give uh, nitrogen needs to give more space to this electron. Here if you see there are four electrons and they are totally dependent on oxygen. There is no one, uh, no other atoms they can go and uh, sit or they can uh, enjoy. They have to come to oxygen. Right? The, the, they need more space. Since they need more space, they repel more. Hope you understand. That means the lone pair needs more space. So the lone pair, lone pair attraction will be maximum because both need more space. Lone pair and bond pair will be little less because this guy is little happy, this guy is not happy and this will be all the more less because both are happy, right? So this will be the order of attraction, repulsion, maximum and this will be. Hope you understand why it is like this. Since the lone pair is totally depending on the central atom, they need this one pair needs more space. Since it needs more space, lone pair, lone pair uh, represents the more. The bond pair is shared between central atom and the terminal atom, so this need doesn't need much space, so the repulsion goes down. So let's start with the Vesper theory. So let's start with the SP uh, geometry first. So SP is a hybridization, anyway we will discuss this hybridization later so you can ignore this part now. So let's take this example of CO2. Here if you see, if you draw the Lewis structure there is no extra lone pair here, right? So all straight. So this, this oxygen will try to repel, both will repel and become straight. Also if you take example of BCL2, beryllium is not having any extra valence electrons, right? So they will repel each other and they will become straight. 
there is zero lone pair correct something like this so one central atom carbon and they are just repelling let's take sp2 hybridization so in this case we have scenarios where there can be zero lone pair or one lone pair so if it is zero lone pair it will be normal triangle planar for example bcl3 you see here so boron has three valence electrons and all these are occupied by these three chlorine atoms so it is not having extra lone pairs right so each of the there is no lone pair here and they are all repelling all the chlorine molecules so they get this shape called triangle planar but if you take this example of so2 sulfur has so this guy has one lone pair here so it will repel since it will repel this will become 1190 see it has to be 120 degree if it is a normal uh, bond pair but since this was a lone pair it repelled all the more so the angle from 120 became 1190 Let's talk about sp3 hybridization things. So in this case, if you see, there are four. Uh, for example, in this case, I have methane CH4, carbon with four hydrogen, and there is no uh, what do you call uh, lone pair on the carbon. So it's a normal shape. I have tetrahedral shape. I have one carbon. If I draw the Lewis structure, there is no extra lone pair on the carbon. This is normal tetrahedral structure. If you talk about ammonia, there are three here, but one lone pair is here. So it will bend. So instead of becoming tetrahedral, it will become trigonal pyramidal. Please note, it becomes trigonal pyramidal. If you take water, since there are two lone pairs here, in oxygen, if you see, and it will repel all the more. So it will repel all the more, the angle will further go down. It will become 104.25. Correct. So this angle was my 120 degree. This become 107. All the more repel it becomes 104.45. So if you see this is a repulsion logic. There was a lone pair here, it repelled, it, the angle squeezed. Two lone pairs squeezed all the more, the angle further went down. Correct. So the normal scenario was tetrahedral with one repulsion it becomes trigonal pyramidal one more repulsion becomes bent. We talk about sp3d hybridization things. So the normal thing it has trigonal bipyramidal if it is not having any lone pair if you see phosphorus is not having any lone pair. So all this five uh, uh, what do you call valence electron it has attached to all this chlorine. So it gives the shape of trigonal bipyramidal, this kind of shape if you see. Now if you see, if instead of one uh, chlorine, if you remove that and we have something uh, similar to uh, a lone pair, something like this, SF4, so there's a lone pair here, right, there's a lone pair here and four other fluid molecules. So if you see the angle is gone now, it's about 120 degree, it becomes 101, the angle is reduced. So instead of one lone pair, if you put two lone pairs in case of if you see CLF3, there are two lone pairs, right? So the angle is all the more reduced. So 90 became 87.5 degree. So if you have three lone pairs, for example, I3, it becomes straight. So I3 molecule, if you see, is something like this. I, I, something like this because it has three lone pairs. So these three lone pairs make the whole structure straight. So it's all about the repulsion from this valence cell electron. If we talk about sp3d2 hybridation uh, uh, structures, if you see it's a normal thing, for example sulfur uh, and this fluorine, six fluorines, then it, it gives the octahedral shape, right? Each of these are 90 degree. But if you remove one uh, 
bond pair with the lone pair in for example in this case brf5 so i have five fluorine but instead of one fluorine i have a lone pair then the angle will change instead of 90 it become 84.8 and if i put two lone pair they both repel each other and you get a square planar shape right if you see this is shape we get square planar in this case we got square pyramidal and in this case we got octahedral so it all depends on the repulsion from the lone pairs and bond pairs so just imagine this from the physics perspective then you will be able to determine the shape of any you can take the same thing from this uh, uh, the number of uh, atoms perspective also for example in this case co2 or b p c l since there was uh, no lone pair it was straight the moment you put a lone pair here it becomes uh, bent you put one more lone pair here two lone pairs here for example h2o right there are two lone pair here it becomes all the more bent i'm taking from the perspective now the number of uh, uh, bonds so there are two bonds here i mean the number of terminal uh, atoms you can say the two terminal atoms here two all has two terminal atoms but it doesn't have any lone pairs so it's straight it has lone pair it becomes bent two lone pairs central atom all the more bent three lone pairs central atom it becomes straight once again so the first few uh, examples i took the same example but the, in that case i was trying to explain the vesper theory from the hybridization perspective now i'm trying to explain the theory based on the number of uh, terminal uh, atoms so we talk about three atoms uh, three terminal atoms now so for example bcl3 so there is no lone pair it is my normal triangle planar the moment you add one lone pair it becomes something like this the angle deteriorates you add one more lone pair the angle is further down right we talk about uh, the molecule which has uh, four terminal atoms for example methane everything is fine there is uh, there is no lone pair in the central atom my angle is perfectly fine so my tetrahedral shape and all the angles are 109.5 degree right if you have the same four uh, terminal molecule things terminal atom things but you add one lone pair here the shape change the angle decrease if you add one more it becomes square planar this is one lone pair one now there are scenarios where we have multiple shape possible multiple shape possible for uh, i mean vesper theory itself will give you multiple shapes so in that case the one with more stable model is chosen so if you see in this case my i have sf4 sf4 but this is more stable in this case my this is more stable pi you see these repels and is straight in this case it is not stable in this case also is not stable so this is more stable here also if you see the lone pair is here the terminal thing that makes things stable if it lone pair is here it will repel this all the more it will become unstable this is pretty stable this lone pair takes care of repulsion of these two so the one which is more stable is chosen as a proper model because if you see here clf3 you can have three models sf4 you can have four models right the one with the more stable shape is picked up thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again